Okay. In front of me is a plaque which is located on the Chelsea Inn, which is on the corner of uh, Chelsea Road and Bloy Street. We have here a plaque which is about a metre across. It's one of the larger and earliest ones that was created by Living Eastern in partnership with other groups and organisations. In this case, Eastern Area Renewal. Now, like the WG Grace one, Eastern Area Renewal has its own symbol and they existed here from 1991 to 2001 and their remit, part of their remit was to regenerate the area. This plaque here was put up in August 1999 so it's past its 10th anniversary. It commemorates the life of a street, Bloy Street, which was regenerated i.e. most of it redeveloped from the late, 80, uh, from the late 1990s uh, in, the, in, in an attempt to sort of a, replace a lot of the crumbling buildings that have been there since 1872. There is a square in the middle of the street which also has its own public sculpture and a time capsule. So if you show the camera you can see the street. It was one of Easton's longest streets, and certainly one of Bristol's longest streets and straightest streets. It also became a rat run, unfortunately, but the swear was designed to, in order to stop that from getting worse. The plaque itself is made of aluminium, and we were given the challenge of trying to interpret the history of a street over a 120-year existence. After several designs, we came up with this design, which was based very similar to one that we were hoping to have put up in the square, but was replaced by another fantastic design. Well worth seeing. This one here, basically, the format shows the two pages of an open book. And it is number five on the Eastern Time Science Trail, along with the Living Eastern symbol, the handshake. We have the legend here which says Bloy Street was first recorded as part of Bristol in 1888 and was probably Bristol's longest and straightest residential street. Running east to west, Bloy Street is a typical mid to late Victorian development and has always been the focus of a strong and active community spirit. The street suffered badly during the winter blitz of November 1940 to April 1941 when a young boy was killed during one night raid on Bristol. The community recovered and continued to ensure Bloy Street's role as an important part of Bristol. As I was saying, in recent years the street suffered decline and concerns were expressed over its future. The street has been re redeveloped in parts with the, re with, the re with the remaining original houses been renovated. The regeneration of the street was a partnership as part of the Eastern Renewal Area declared by Bristol City Council in 1991. Now if we look closely at the plaque, we had to encapsulate 120 years of history. So we thought the best way to do it was to show scenes, show fashions, show events on both of these panels. Starting with the legend on the top which of both panels, starting with the birth of the street in 1872, so basically we did it decade by decade, 1870 to 1900, birth of a community, 1910 to the 1920s, industry and war, 1930s to the 1940s, leisure and freedom, 1950s to the 1960s, health and wealth, 1970s to the 1980s, culture and Richmond, and 1990s to the future, concerns and renewal. As I said earlier, this plaque was put up 10 years ago, so it's already become a part of the area's history. Various changes have happened since then. Renewal zone doesn't exist anymore, but that's what's an important part of the area's recent renewal. Now, if you look at this, uh, the areas below, we tried as much as we can to depict people who lived in the streets in that period. When we couldn't get photographs, we had to rely on fashions and development. So we show the houses as they were prior to redevelopment in the 1990s and their replacement by the later ones with Bloor Street written on there. We also show the coming of the railway, Stapleton Road Station, which was discussed on that occasion, 
had its line open in 1863 and the Lawrence Hill nearby opened in 1858. We showed the coal mining aspect of the area because we're not far from the collieries in Easton and Whitehall. We show fashions at the time. We, we, we show a barrel maker, a draftsman, because this area was a pub in the 1870s. It still is a pub today. One of the few remaining pubs in this area. We show different modes of transport from the shower bags of the 1920s and 30s to the cars of the 30s and 40s to the vans of the 1970s and 80s. We also show different uniforms from the period. The First World War, for example, the aircraft from the First World War and the aircraft from the Second World War, as well as a representative of the women's armed um, uh, um, forces wing uh, from World War II. We have here depicted a scene from the uh, fatality suffered when this street was bombed as part of the area's bombing in 1940-41. Uh, fortunately a child was killed. Uh, he was caught out in the middle of the street. So we had to commemorate that. We also commemorated the Silver Jubilee in 1910-1935, showing old comrades, the rent collector, and in the 1970s and 80s, when the diversity of the area began to change, and the enrichment that brings the area to its thriving uh, cultural diversity. We have here people moving into a new home in Bush Street at the time. We have children, new generations coming up, people from many backgrounds and different religions. We also have here a map showing the redevelopment of the Blois Street area in the 1990s and a cross marking where the plaque is on the Chelsea Inn pub. This lady here, for example, is modelled on a young woman that lives, lives in Blois Street, then was rehoused and then she came back when the street was, uh, was finished. And uh, she, she's one of the few, rep few, uh, few representatives that we were able to depict uh, as part of the history of this street. Very important. And here we have a scene where uh, the, 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 you know, members of the council from the Eastern Renewal area are showing documents to the local population to show how they can be involved as part of the consultation process for the regeneration of the street. So, Bloy Street is very much a part of the area's diversity, both culturally and uh, artistically. And uh, if you look at the area, you can see how diverse the area it is in terms of its building content, in terms of their use, and in terms of how the streets have remained for the past hundred years. We're very much in the coal mining district. We lost all this in the 1960s, uh, but for the actions of local people.